Dear students, today let us take up the next lecture of photosynthesis, where we will study about photophosphorylation and photorespiration. Let us start with the introduction. Photophosphorylation is the formation of ATP from ADP using the light energy from sunlight during photosynthesis. In photophosphorylation, light energy is used to create a high energy electron donor and a low energy electron acceptor. Electrons then move spontaneously from donor to acceptor through an electron transport chain. Photorespiration is the light dependent release of carbon dioxide from photosynthetic organisms and is caused by oxygen substituting for carbon dioxide in the first step of photosynthetic carbon dioxide fixation. Let us start with non-cyclic photophosphorylation. During light reaction of photosynthesis, plants and algae use the two photosystems that is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 to produce both ATP and NADPH through flow of electrons. The chlorophylls present in the reaction centers of photosystem 1 has absorption maximum at 700 nanometer and is generally represented as P700 and that of photosystem 2 has P680 due to absorption maximum of reaction center chlorophyll molecule at 680 nanometer. Light coming from sun is trapped by P680 of photosystem 2 which raises some of the electrons to higher energy level. This excited P680 emits high energy electrons to pheophytin which is a chlorophyll molecule where central magnesium is replaced with two hydrogen atoms. The oxidized P680 returned to its ground state by accepting an electron release during splitting of water molecule with the release of molecular oxygen. The overall removal of four electrons from oxidation of water will release protons and one molecule of oxygen. The high energy electron accepted by pheophytin passed to plastoquinone which is a mobile quinone along the thylakoid membrane. The plastoquinone then pass the electron to cytochrome B6F complex and then to plastocyanin. The cytochrome B6F complex is a large multi subunit protein with several prostatic groups and plastocyanin is a copper containing protein. The reaction center PS700 of photosystem 1 becomes excited by absorbing light energy from sun and the excited P700 releases high energy electrons to feridoxin which is a protein that contains one iron sulfur cluster. The oxidized P700 received electron from reduced plastocyanin and returned to its ground state. From the two molecules of feridoxin, the high energy electrons are transferred to NADP plus to NADPase in presence of NADP reductase. During the flow of high energy electrons created by the two photosystems, there is reduction of redox potential in the electron carriers. One of the electron acceptor cytochrome B6F complex acts as proton pump which pumps hydrogen ions from the stroma into the thylakoid space. Thylakoid space is the thylakoid membranes enclosing a lumen and internal space separated from the stroma outside. Pumping of protons by B6F complex leads to formation of proton gradient along the thylakoid membranes. The protons released during oxidation of water is also released in the thylakoid space. But the protons used during the reduction of NADP plus 2 NADPase is taken from stroma. This also contributes to establishment of proton gradient along the thylakoid membrane. The proton gradient drives the synthesis of ATP along the ATP synthase located in the thylakoid membrane. 
Thus, the energy from sunlight has been used to produce ATP and this process of production of ATP synthesis is known as photophosphorylation, which is analogous to ATP synthesis via a proton gradient during oxidative phosphorylation in mitochondria. The cyclic electron flow through the cytochrome B and plastoquinone increases the number of protons pumped per electron beyond what could be achieved in a strictly linear sequence. High energy electrons generated by photosystem 2 are used to synthesize ATP and then pass to photosystem 1 to drive the production of NADPH. For every pair of electrons obtained from water, one molecule of NADPH and slightly more than one molecule of ATP are produced. The part of the electron flow during the formation of ATP is not in a cycle where the electrons ejected from the photosystems would rather end up through the electron acceptor forming NADPH. This process of ATP formation is called non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Next, let us take up cyclic photophosphorylation. When the NADPH to NADP plus ratio is high and little NADP plus is available to accept electrons, an alternative electron transport pathway is used that involves only photosystem 1 and a few electron carriers. Here, the high energy electron is passed by ferredoxin to the cytochrome B6F complex instead of to NADP plus. It then flows to plastocyanin and back to the P700 of photosystem 1. The resulting proton gradient generated from the proton pump cytochrome B6F complex then drives ATP synthesis. During this cyclic photophosphorylation, ATP is formed but no NADPH is met. Furthermore, since photosystem 2 is not involved, there is no oxygen production. ATP formation in photosynthetic bacteria occurs through cyclic photophosphorylation as only one photosystem is found in them. Non-cyclic photophosphorylation involves photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 with non-cyclic electron flow leading to the formation of NADPH and ATP. Cyclic photophosphorylation involves the cyclic flow of electron using photosystem 1 with the sole formation of ATP. Let us now take up photorespiration. The enzyme Rubisco that catalyzes the key carbon fixing reaction of photosynthesis has the ability to utilize ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate or RUBP. Under normal atmospheric conditions, Rubisco adds more carbon dioxide to rubulose. However, when the carbon dioxide concentration is low, oxygen is incorporated into ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate which undergoes additional reactions that actually releases carbon dioxide. Because the net result of this process is to consume oxygen and release carbon dioxide, it is known as photorespiration. It is also known as the oxidative photosynthetic carbon cycle or C2 photosynthesis. Rubisco favors carbon dioxide over oxygen by a factor of up to 100, but the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere is much higher than that of carbon dioxide. As a result, for every 3 molecules of carbon dioxide by Rubisco, about 1 molecule of oxygen is fixed. The carboxylation and oxidation of ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate are catalyzed at the same active site on Rubisco and compete with each other. So, during photorespiration, oxygen interferes the carbon fixation in photosynthesis. There is also loss of energy and carbon dioxide during metabolism of the toxic phosphoglycolate which is formed as byproduct during photorespiration. Oxygenation is the primary reaction in this process. This is a major problem for plants in hot climates. The plants close the gas exchange pores in their leaves or stomata to conserve water, 
but this leads to a drop in the carbon dioxide concentration within the leaf favoring photorespiration. In addition, as temperature rises, the oxygenous activity of the rubisco using oxygen increases more rapidly than the carboxylous activity using carbon dioxide, again favoring photorespiration. During photorespiration, phosphoglycolate and 3-phosphoglycerate are formed. The phosphoglycolate can be salvaged and used for biosynthetic reactions, but the pathway releases carbon dioxide and ammonium ion as wastes of metabolic energy. The reaction of photorespiration involves three different organelles in higher plants, that is the chloroplast, the peroxisome and the mitochondria. Within chloroplast, oxygenous activity by rubisco results in formation of glycolate. Within peroxisomes, oxygen is consumed in converting glycolate to glyoxylate and aminated to form glycine. Within mitochondria, carbon dioxide is released during conversion of glycine to serine. So, the reactions begin in the chloroplast with the oxygenation of ribulose bisphosphate or RUBP. When carbon dioxide is fixed by rubisco, two molecules of phosphoglycerate are produced, whereas when oxygen is used, one phosphoglycerate and one phosphoglycolate are produced. Photorespiration involves conversion of the phosphorylated glycolate to the amino acid glycine. This is followed by the conversion of two glycine molecules which contain two carbon each to the amino acid serine containing three carbons plus one molecule of carbon dioxide and one of ammonia. Finally, the serine is converted to glycerate and then phosphoglycerate. There is a net loss of one carbon dioxide and one ammonia for each oxygenation event. The phosphoglycolate produced in dephosphorylated to glycolate inside the chloroplast and the glycolate then moves to the peroxisomes. Peroxisomes have the catalyst required to break down hydrogen peroxide as oxidation of glycolate to glyoxylate produces hydrogen peroxide and reactions that generate hydrogen peroxide normally occur in peroxisomes. Glycine is formed from glyoxylate through transamination, which then moves to the mitochondrion. Photorespiration results in loss of carbon dioxide from cells that are simultaneously fixing carbon dioxide by the Kelvin cycle. So, carbon dioxide and oxygen, which are alternative substrates for rubisco, compete for reaction with ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate as carboxylation and oxygenation occur within the same active site of the enzyme. This process reduces the efficiency of photosynthesis, potentially reducing photosynthetic outputs by 25% in C3 plants. To avoid these problems, some plants adapt to live in the hot climates such as corn and sugarcane have evolved a mechanism to maximize the carboxylous activity of rubisco. In these plants, carbon fixation using the Kelvin cycle takes place only in bundle seed cells other than mesophyll cells. Since the bundle seed cells are not exposed to air, the oxygen concentration is low in these cells. Thus, there is separation of rubisco and oxygen. However, the carbon dioxide is transported from the air via the mesophyll cells to the bundle seed cells by mallet or aspartate shuttle. Photorespiration is clearly deleterious to plants. Due to the high rates of photorespiratory carbon dioxide release, photorespiration is a wasteful process imposing a strong carbon drain on plants. When the rate of photorespiration becomes too high, for example, when the oxygen concentration is increased above the oxygen compensation point for a given carbon dioxide concentration, photorespiration leads to a depletion of carbohydrates leading to accelerated senescence. However, formation of amino acids glycine and serine 
during photorespiration will provide source of amino acid during protein synthesis. Also, photorespiration can help in managing light to prevent wilting of leaves during excess exposure to light, especially during drought. So, it is widely accepted that photorespiration influences a wide range of processes from bioenergetics, photosystem to function and carbon metabolism to nitrogen assimilation and respiration. Coming to the conclusion. The energy in the form of ATP is synthesized by green plants through photophosphorylation in presence of sunlight. The solar energy in the form of photons is converted to ATP which is a form of chemical energy. This ATP form will drive the fixation of carbon dioxide during carbon fixation cycle leading to formation of organic compounds. Photorespiration occurs in most of the plants although it reduces the photosynthetic efficiency. Rate of photorespiration depends on certain factors like stress and hot climate. So, some plants growing in dry and hot climatic conditions evolve mechanisms to avoid photorespiration like in C4 plants and camp plants. Thank you.